Hello and welcome to Diminishing Returns. Uh, this week we're doing something a little bit different. Um, we don't tackle musical theatre too often, although more often than you might think. Uh, before we get into that, let's just introduce ourselves. My name is Alan, with me as always is Sol. Um, and uh, joining us for the second time in the matter of a few weeks is Emily Slade of the Why This Film podcast. Hello! So, uh, guys, today we are tackling Cats, um, the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, because, of course, there is a film adaptation of it coming out, um, and we will talk about that near the end of the podcast, but I want to get into the history of Cats first, because, basically, just set my story here. Fearless Catus. I'm... I'd never, um, I'd never Ancient seen cats. Egyptians worship them. <laughs> not, not that far back. So. All right. um, the musical cats. So I, I, I'd never seen it. I didn't know anything about it apart from that what? one song that everybody knows. Um, yeah, but, yeah. But even that, I only know it, it goes like. That's about all I know it's, about um, cats. It's Patchabelle's canon, and he just slowed it down. It's complete plagiarism. Oh, he, he does. He does a lot of that. Does Lloyd Webber? He love. He loves his plagiarism. He loves it. Just Lion King too, isn't it? Did we ever talk about uh, his musical adaptation of when the? Oh, whistle down the wind. Yeah, whistle down the wind. Yeah. Did we ever talk about his musical adaptation of that, where he just basically took the Jurassic Park theme tune and put lyrics over it? It's <laughs> <coughs> all these people. And there was really? the Boy Zone song in it, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you ever heard it, Alan? It, honestly, it's just. It's just no. all these people going like, Whistle down the wind, there's a man called Jesus. <laughs> we got a fire, she had we got a fire, she had a to open up the bar. <laughs> well, just to get back onto this, right, I, I, I didn't really know anything about Cats, so I just decided to watch this kind of, I didn't read into it before I watched it, I thought I'll go in cold. And that was uh, a now, foolish error. Now, well, uh, Emily, I suspect you you don't know. Uh, Sol is a bit of a musical theatre fan. Um, really? And I, I thought I was dealing with a couple of amateurs. <laughs> well, judging from yeah you, you, what you've said so far, <laughs> you are as well. Uh, yeah, Sol's <laughs> yes. a, a bit of a Sol's definitely a, a musical well, guy. Aren't I you? I love musicals, but I I think I'm more. Um, I love a film musical as much as a stage musical, you know. I and it, it's I'm still quite picky in particular with it. I I love Les Misérables, <laughs> but I can't stand Wicked. Uh, okay, you're you're not its demographic, to be fair. Yeah, I was well. I can't stand this strong. I, I thought it was very bland and generic. Uh, what do I love? I love Book of Mormon. I thought Miss Saigon was very bland and generic. I think a lot of them are very bland and generic, and then I get annoyed with how many of them just end with someone, like the main character, dying and everyone starts crying. And Have you seen any of the like <laughs> old ones? Oh, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, I, I love musical theatre from about the 80s onwards. I, I, I really struggle right. with the jazzy uh, Gene Kelly stuff from the 50s and earlier. And what about the Rogers and Hammerstein, your Oklahomas and your um, Calamity Janes? Um... Oklahoma, I don't mind some of the songs, but if the one time I tried to watch the full film version of it, it was pretty interminable. And my friend was obsessed with the Hugh Jackman stage version that he had a recording yes, of. Yes, that's good too. They're both pretty solid, to be fair. There's just no stamina in musical theatre fans yeah. these days. I do I do love that. <laughs> um, what was it? Beast? No, what was it? Geese, geese and ducks and... Animals better scurry. That one. Chicks and ducks and geese better scurry. When I take you out in the Surrey. When I take you out in the Surrey with the fringe on top. What? Oh. <laughs> the Surrey with the fringe on top. <laughs> geese and birds and mice in the Surrey. <laughs> They're not in the Surrey. You're in the Surrey. That's what got him. That's what got him Wolverine. <laughs> I like Little Shop of. I like Little Shop of Horrors. I like musicals with a bit of a bit of bite. You like, oh, yeah. you like 
you like musicals for non-musical people. It sounds like maybe. And yeah, that, I don't that mean. Sound, I don't mean that. That as sounds an like a, an, <laughs> That sounded like an insult. <laughs> I mean, like, like, like Book of Mormon, Little Shop of Horrors. They're those subverting yeah. sort of like very modern. They're the yeah, musical for the people music. who hate musicals. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, I think I I would say Book of Mormon is a a love letter and an ode to the musical, and it's quite sincere and that's in fair. that. But um, I know I know what you're saying. I, I it really bugs me actually. It's very common that you run across uh, people, film fans, who say, "Oh, I love films apart from musicals," and it really annoys me because you only have to talk to them for about three minutes. I don't think I've ever encountered someone where I haven't had to throw out more than three. What about this? What about that? And usually you say, mm-hmm. what about The Lion King? And they go, well, that's not a musical, it's animated. And yeah. it's absolutely a musical. Of course it is. Disney 100%. films are musicals as much as anything. Um, yeah. There's the, someone I work with who claims to hate musicals, but she loves Little Shop of Horrors, and I don't know how that yeah. tracks in her in her mind. She loves the South Park movie. It's, you know, But yeah, it's mm-hmm. like you say, I suppose they're musicals that are a bit subversive. They're not as yeah sincere and and bright and, and yeah. gay in the traditional sense of the word and even that it like you know rent isn't particularly happy but like people yeah class it but as like rent, a musical rent whereas <laughs> trash <laughs> i i've never seen rent but i listened to the soundtrack and i was i was amazed maybe i'd heard too many parody takes on it and it had kind maybe, of been ruined by yeah. that but it, i was amazed at how many of the hundreds of songs on the soundtrack were just people on the phone and then how many songs were just (laughs) how many songs were just out and out you know oh no we're so sad speak mark cohen alexi darling labor day weekend in east hampton on the beach just saw alec baldwin told him you said hi Just kidding. We still need directors. You still need money. You know you need money. Pick up the phone. Don't be afraid of ker-ching, ker-ching. Marky, sell us your soul. Just kidding. We're waiting. We're going to have to move out. We can't pay the rent. And it was like, that's a bit bit on the nose. That's what most of Les Mis is as well. Yeah, what is that about? I I did this. And now I've got to run away. Yeah. It's the same vibe, but yet people like will hate one and love the other because yeah. that one deserves more respect because blah, 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 blah. What, it's, it's interesting. There's a whole road to go down yeah. on musical theatre. Yeah. Well, I, I must say Les, Les Mis is a weird one because it is a very sincere musical that I love. It's probably my favourite musical and I don't really know why that one gets away with it. I, I mean, I think ultimately it comes down to the music for me. I think I just think the music oh, yeah, itself it's is to. so strong in Les Mis that yes, I don't really yeah. care about how melodramatic and contrived <laughs> parts of it are. <laughs> Well, this this is it. I mean, I, I'm I wouldn't certainly wouldn't call myself a fan of musicals, but you know, we did Little Shop of Horrors on this very show, and we we all loved it. Um, for example, there are certain things I like, but I'm not a fan of melodrama. I like realism. I like quite sort of depressing, gritty stuff. I mean, I like Rent. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> but, <laughs> See, I'm I'm the opposite. I I love things that embrace poetry and and metaphor over realism, and obviously they have to be grounded to a point, but. I, I remember when we watched Breaking Bad, Alan, in it uh, when we were living together, and you were much less on board with me. And I think a big part of that was that there are aspects that are uh, pushing the boundaries of of believable. And mm. for me, that's fine because you know a, a big metaphorical plane crash plays into the overall subtext, and and I love the metaphor that it creates. But on a on a really base level it's like yeah that is kind of unrealistic that that one happened that mm. way mm-hmm. and just casually uh our diminisode on the breaking bad netflix film el camino we that'll be available now go and check it out <laughs> if you're a patreon <laughs> Um, but but yeah, I, I tend to like musicals when they're comedy because I don't have to try and take it seriously. Yeah. It can be over the top and silly, and that's fine. Uh, whenever I'm asked to sort of take any emotional content seriously, I, I find it very difficult because it's not delivered seriously. Yeah, it's very yeah. melodramatic and over the top. So, Cats. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just sort of go through the first 10 minutes for you because this was... I, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into at all. And the fact that I, it's a very famous musical, but I couldn't 
tell you any songs from it apart from that one and I, I couldn't tell you anything about it which I you still can't name neither of you have been able to name that song memory yeah, it's, it's oh, memory okay. <laughs> and it was sung by elaine page the the, the version mm. that everyone likes yeah but the but the first 10 minutes of this made it very clear why that is i mean there isn't a plot is there it's it's and I, and i kind of yeah i had this this slow kind of desperate yeah. realization that this isn't a musical it's a ballet and it's like oh my god this is more about the dance than the music, and and then I and then I had a kind of had this shift where I was like, okay, well, let me embrace that. Maybe I'll enjoy it. Uh, so I, I really struggled <laughs> at first. Um, so yeah, I guess you knew what you were getting before you went in. Yes, I've never seen the stage show of Cats, but I had the 1998 recorded version on DVD for as long as I can That is the one I watched, yes. And I watch it often, and I listen... To be honest, I don't listen to the music, but I've I've watched the film often, to the point where I kind of know a lot of the dance moves, and I was dancing along with the DVD. (laughs) Cats is such a funny one. It's not one I ever wanted to see live. It's not one I've never really listened to the cast album of. But I will sit down and I will watch that two hours of utter madness from start to finish. Mm. And I will <clears throat> defend it until I die. Um, well, you're going to be defending it for the next two oh, hours. <laughs> so, and like for so. no good reason because everything I watch recently, uh, Kimmy Schmidt, Crazy Ex Girlfriend, all of these wonderful TV programs, they all took the opportunity recently to just shit all over cats. And it just, yeah, yeah. It, even when you're shitting on cats, it comes from a place of love because everyone's just like, what the fuck is this? It's had a big cultural shift, I think. It was a huge, huge smash hit in um, the 90s. And I I believe for a time Mm -hmm. it was the longest running uh, West End show before Les Miserables uh, overtook it. It was huge! Yeah, and and, you know, I I think I I might still have a a cat's mug from the the show. (laughs) I I went to see it as a kid. I never had the video, but I, I was obsessed with Cats the Animal. As a child, mm-hmm. I'm still a big fan, but I was up, like, I, I was taken to um, see the stage show, and I, I loved it as a child, but, I mean, what the children, though, you know? Fucking hell. Well, I, I did think that, actually, when I was watching this, is, like, does this appeal to kids? Like, uh, like who the hell is this for, starters? And and do, do kids get it? Is it, like, on a child level? Because it doesn't have to have a plot, it's just a sort of flashy things and dancing and movement. Is it designed for cats? <laughs> uh, I think that's yeah, quite an astute observation. It, it it would play that way, wouldn't it? I I went to see it with my uh, my mum's partner at the time, and I, I all I remember is that he was very uncomfortable with. Uh, I don't know if you know Alan, but the the actors playing the cats go out into the audience and start like purring up against people, and he did not like. Yeah, it. they start like rubbing up against. He, you yeah, and stuff. He, he was not happy with that. These these. <laughs> These very likely gay men rubbing up against him, <laughs> in you know, in in a kind of nineties pre woke era of uh, attitude. So yeah, but I, I I remember liking it as a kid. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, I loved the book of T. S. Eliot poems as a kid, and I think that was what got me into it more than anything. They're direct, like the lyrics are just directly the poems, aren't they? So you can't really fault them for that. Because um, it's as accurate as it's ever going to be, and a lot of the tunes. I mean, we'll go into the songs. I, I, I rated all the songs, by the way. <laughs> oh so, wow! Uh... <laughs> I would struggle to differentiate any of them. <laughs> I, I just looked in my cupboard, and I do still have a cat smug trademark nineteen eighty one R U G P L C made in England. Oh my god, nineteen eighty one. Yeah, get get a, get a picture of yourself with it, Sol. Uh, um, <laughs> All right, we can, we can yeah. post that. <laughs> All right, <laughs> the content of you. <laughs> but there, there's been a real shift, I think, and it's it's the inevitable backlash when something is perhaps more popular than it deserves. <laughs> um, then it, yeah, yeah, no, I would I would 100 say that. I feel like Cats has become incredibly uncool, and yeah, any. It's still referenced a lot in TV, as as you say, and it's usually mm. quite scathing. 
uh, I think a recent episode of Family Guy, in fact, from like a week or two weeks ago. It wasn't a good joke. It was a very typical Family Guy joke. Well, a cat came guy. out and sang a bit of memory, and then I Peter turned to camera and said, "You kids are too young to remember that, but your parents are gonna hate it." <laughs> I I think the uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt though. You know when you watch, oh. you know when you watch something and you think, "Oh dear, they've just." They've ruined that for me now. They've just completely deconstructed it, and I, I just cannot. It brought me a new like love of it because they. I don't know if you know Alan what the joke is on Kimmy Schmidt. It, it's no. um, it's beautiful. It's it's some incredible comedy. It's a very perfect. it's it's like it's like the penultimate episode of the whole show. So it was quite an odd <laughs> choice of time to start laying into a, a musical in that's not been <laughs> going for like. 15 years but one of one of the main characters on the show is an a-, a struggling actor and he gets into an argument with a child whilst in the audience for cats and he he ends up as sort of to prove a point just yeah making a makeshift costume jumping up on stage and just improvising a song about how he's the you know the scrumbliest bumbliest cat the cats had more babies and these are their babies it's, it's good over. I'm sure you who belongs up on that stage. Is all this just to impress a 12-year-old? <laughs> Only 60%. The rest is about achieving my dream. I am a kitty cat. My name is Turbo Bra. From Bumbly is a silly cat, he from Bumble's all the day. From Bumbly is so silly, in fact, he dies if he doesn't get a blow. And he always proves his points to all the And, uh... And then at the end, they're like, you've discovered the secret of cats. Welcome to the show, brother. Welcome to the cast. So you thought that you would go up on that stage in your homemade costume, sing a bunch of nonsense in the middle of a Broadway show. Well, good for you, because you just discovered the secret of cats. (laughs) My kittens, the great mother cat has eaten another placenta. A kitty is born. His name is from Bumbly. From Bumbly. Meow, meow, meow. Um, I know this is a shock, but do you really think that you're the first actor desperate, delusional, or narcissistic enough to think, that should be me up there? Are you saying that? Doesn't exist. It all started in 1980 when a New Haven production of Hello, Dolly got Legionnaire's disease and didn't show up. A disgruntled actor in the audience saw his opportunity and, shall we say, pounced. (laughs) Inspired by his day job as a Times Square Garfield, he delivered an impromptu two-hour monologue about cats. He called himself Mr. Mizzlemitz. All hail Mizzlemitz. So the whole show is made up? We just do some poppers and say whatever comes to mind. Jellico, Griddlebone, Mungo Jerry, Jimmy McCracklins. But I thought the show was based on some poems by T.S. Eliot. And what is Eliot an anagram of? To lie. What about Andrew Lloyd Webber? He wrote the show. Did he? Look carefully. Andrew Lola Maloney. The mind sees what it wants to see. Also, a lot of people can't read cursive. So am I, like, in cats now? (laughs) To the extent that anyone is in cats, yes! Welcome from Bumbly. From Bumbly! I, if I, saw, I saw recently someone, uh, someone basically said the whole show is two hours of cats introducing themselves and then eventually they give permission to one of them to die. Yeah, that's the plot. Yeah. Uh, that's the that's, plot. That's, that's, you, have you just read my notes, Sol? <laughs> <laughs> Without wanting to get too far into it, the, the ungodly, terrifying uh, aesthetic they've embraced for this film coming out. Oh my god. And, um... Is it James Corden, I believe, is playing Mr. Mistopheles? <sighs> no, he's playing Buster for Jones and it makes oh, no fucking okay. sense. Sorry. It's just there there's a there's a a a demon, a very prominent demon from German folklore, uh, known as <laughs> Mephistopheles. And I'm just I'm trying to figure out what the 
what the relationship is, because I'm pretty sure that Andrew Lloyd Webber is doing something with the devil. I mean, just look oh, at the God, look at the dead eyes on Taylor Swift in that trailer. There's, it's not right. There's something wrong going on. <laughs> <laughs> The 1998 DVD or video version was an, a, a combination of a bunch of people that they managed to get together from previous productions, previous touring productions, as one sort of big hurrah to sort of oh, film okay. Cat. I, I can only assume near the end of its run. Um, and they've got John Mills in here, which um, he'd never oh, done yeah. Cats before. He's just like an old actor. Oh, okay. And they got him in. Just an old... Just a... Ken Page, who... Um, Ken Page. I know Ken Page. He's Oogie Boogie in The Oogie, Nightmare Before Oogie Christmas. Oogie Boogie, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, the gator in All Dogs Go to Heaven. So it's it's like... It's a solid... And then everyone else is like really good, obviously. Um, obviously, neither of you really grew up with it properly because I was going to ask who your favourite cat was, but I don't think you know all the names. I definitely <laughs> had favourite cats, but I think it was based on the book of poems. And uh, Yeah, that's fair. I think I like... Which one's the magician? I think that was my favourite Mr. Mistopheles. Yeah, Mr. Mistopheles. I think it was him. Yeah, that I liked. He's, he's a fan favourite. <laughs> well, I will, I'll say now... That song was my favourite, the Mistopheles song. Really? Oh, really? He's always deceiving you into believing that he's only hunting for mice. He can play any trick with a cork or a spoon and a bit of fish paste. And if you look for a knife or a fork and you think it is merely misplaced, you have seen it one moment, then it is gone. You find it next week lying out on the lawn. And we all say, The song was just quite catchy. Uh-huh. Um, it was one of the better songs in that sense. Like it was a proper dance, like proper dancing, uh, as opposed to most of the other stuff in this, which was prancing around. Hey. Um, right, hang on. We, like we, we're jumping around all over the place here, like a cat. Uh, so let's just can we go back to the beginning? <laughs> so, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> let, let's, well, let's try and take it chronologically to have a bit of order. Okay. Uh, my first note was just that there's a real playfulness to the lyrics that's actually quite nice. Um, you know, stuff about the the pharaohs commissioning the sphinx. But I, I assume <laughs> that is just the poems and Andrew Lloyd Webber's yes, script. Yes, it's the poems. Okay. Yeah. All right, so no credit to the musical for that. Well, no. he, he, he was, <laughs> whenever there's a big ensemble number, which obviously is a lot of that in musicals, or even just sometimes the chorus of a, of a song... I can't understand anything anyone's saying because they're all singing at once and it just becomes this sort of mass of noise. And I, I've had this problem in recorded versions, in live versions. It just seems to be the nature of the beast in terms of ensemble singing. It just completely obliterates the lyrics. I have no idea what was going on. Okay, well, that's not something okay. I've ever struggled with. I, I struggled yes. to follow what was going on with this, but I don't... Lyrically, I wasn't struggling to hear it. I would say maybe for the first song you can get away with your opinion because well it's all nonsense words middle. isn't it jellical cats yeah, and jellical cats and there's a jellical cat the jellical cat that might, that there's might a jellical cat a jellical like cat they... and a jellical cat over here jellicals are and jellicals do jellicals do and jellicals would jellicals would and jellicals can jellicals can and jellicals do and then immediately they go into a, re- a reprisal of Jellicle Cats out of Jellicle Cats, which I couldn't believe because <laughs> I just endured what felt like two hours of Jellicle Cats. <laughs> and then they start going, A Jellicle Cats, it's Jellicle Cats, and then a Jellicle Cats, a Jellicle Cats. But I don't know what a Jellicle Cat is, I still don't know. <laughs> so there's a whole song you. explaining it. I know I didn't understand any of it. 
didn't understand a word of it. I, I got, I was trying to, the whole time I was trying to figure out what they were saying. Because they were, they were saying, I think they're saying jellical cat. So are they saying angelical? Is that what they're trying to say? Is it something else? Jollyful? I, I, could, I, I was trying to figure out what that word was. But I think you'd have a similar problem if you watched the Pokemon the musical, whatever it was called, Alan. Because you wouldn't know what any <laughs> of the Pokemon... I would never do that. Yeah, but you wouldn't understand what any of the words were. It's the same thing. They'd be going on about, you know... Yeah. Pokemon Masters in the house. Come on, let's raise the roof. As Sol pointed out, it is the lyrics are because jellicles are angelicals do, jellicles do, angelicals would, jellicles would, angelicals and jellicals can, and jellicles do. <laughs> those, are, those are the actual lyrics. I have a question, Alan, and I, I apologise to Emily in advance, but uh, I have to know how far into this did you get before you were too turned on and you had to stop? <laughs> <laughs> no okay right so <laughs> i like cats the animal like like humans dressed as cats i found <laughs> i found a, a video on youtube once of it was like a makeup tutorial of a, a girl making herself look like a a cat in a sort of weirdly uh-huh. photo realistic way and then she started going meow 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 <laughs> and alan like <laughs> It was bookmarked. He, it was his favourite thing. <laughs> <laughs> My God, this musical must have sent you crazy then. It's just a bunch of sexy dancers no, dressed no. up as sexy skin tight cats. I I don't I do like I like cats, the animals, right? I I I, I like that's my choice of animal, yeah. And I don't know if I do like people dressed up as cats. I don't know. I don't know about that. But yeah, in this it, 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 I don't really like the kind of anthropomorphization mm, of Well, yeah, I wanted to... Yeah, I didn't, like... There was a real inconsistency, I thought, in how the actors approached being cats and the movements, and some were a lot better at it than others. Some were kind of mm. like, I'm... Ooh, cats are so graceful, I'm gonna behave like a ballerina. And it's like, well, cats don't mm. really walk like that. That's like a... That's a, mm. that's a stereotype. <laughs> so then like, but then other cat actors were like actually more like cats and it was better and then some just weren't even yeah. it just it just reminds me of those sort of uh you know acting uh, now now you're a tree act being yeah, a tree like, for 20 oh, minutes be a, be a cat and, yeah. and it's like that's fair enough i understand the principle of that where you're kind of creating an embodiment of something but to just create a character and actually do it is i don't know you either i think you either you either be human with cat-like qualities, or you be a cat, and and you can't do that, and you especially can't do that when you're, uh, you know, actually a dancer. Yeah, it's like it's yeah. like this contemporary dance interpretation of cat movement. Yeah, and it's just uh, and just... and also the uh, the scale was all over the place. One minute they'd be picking up like a pin, and it'd be like twice the size of them, and then the next minute they'd pick up like <laughs> a a top hat and it was actually quite small which was more accurate no i think i think because i'm gonna go into this about the new 2019 movie i think the stage show keeps its um scales quite appropriate if the if the clothing belongs to the cat's cat size because the cat tailors made it but if it's the rubbish from the heap around them it tends to be appropriately sized i can't say i got that far into it i was i didn't get past the cats (laughs) I very quickly made the note that um, everything in this just goes on too long and ends up being interminable. Like, each bit starts off with quite, mm. like, you're quite positive and like, okay, this is alright. And then and then the cats start mumble chanting at the audience about being a cat and it goes on and on and on forever and it's absolutely interminable and it never stops i can't understand what i agree to some extent i think the opening song jellical cats i gave a seven out of ten to because it's a it's a bang it's a great opening you come in but then they go into the naming of cats which is the one where they're like stood in like a choir the naming of cats is a difficult matter 
it isn't just one of your holiday games. You may think at first I'm as mad as a hatter when I tell you. And they just like whisper yeah. sing to the audience oh, on like it. monotone. That got a two out of ten. Yeah, it's horrible. Um, is that a song? And then out of fucking nowhere, it's time to start. It's like, oh, cat's time with Jenny Any dots. Here she comes, right? Let's. Do- and it's like, oh, okay, we're right. Forget the plot then. We're straight in with Jenny Any dots. Um, they sort of vaguely do the plot. It's not really a song form though. They're just like. And how the Jellical cats have gathered to decide who goes to the heavenside lair. Anyway, this is Jenny Any Dots. She's a Jellical cat. Let's fucking sing about this bitch. And like, we're immediately into it. The problem with this whole thing is it's the first ten minutes of a musical stretched into an entire production. Like, you're meant to, you're meant to have one song at the start <laughs> where everyone's introduced and then that's it, it's done. Like, the Mean Girls musical is excellent. I, I love it. And they, they have one song at the start, they go around the school, here are the band geeks, here are the math geeks, oh, here are the plastics, my name's Karen, oh, it's, my name is Regina, George, all right, done, boom. <laughs> It's like the start of Book of Mormon. It's just all of them going, hello. Hello, my name is Elder Young. Did you know that Jesus lived here in the USA? You can read all about it now. In this nifty book, it's free. No, you don't have to pay. Hello, hello, my name is Elder Smith. And can I leave this book with you for you to just peruse? Hello, hello, hello. I'll just leave it here. It has a lot of influence. My name is Elder. This it, you just get through all the characters. We don't need two hours of <laughs> Oh, the next character's coming. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Oh, I'm an old cat. Maybe I'll be the one to die because I'm quite old. Oh, the next cat's coming. This cat likes to fuck. I'm the cat who likes to fuck. I like to fuck all the other cats. Maybe I'll die because I fuck so much. Here's the next cat. I am the cat who likes to do the knitting. Maybe I'll die because I knit. So your version is already better than the one I just watched. I I really don't like in this in this production. Well, not this production. This show. It treats cats as if they're some sort of mythical magical beings it doesn't treat them they like are. real animals it's like is it it's as if we're going down to the woods and we're going to watch the gathering of fairies and they're going to do some magical so does the poem so does the original poems it's like although actually no i get your point because uh, you're right there's a there's a sort of rift between what we're hearing about the cats and what we see the cats yeah. do and how they are so mr mistopheles is like it's a cute little poem about how this cat that, oh, you hear him on the roof, but he's actually asleep by the fire because, you know, cats, what are they like? But in this, they're like, no, no, he is magic. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, he can, like, do stuff. And the biggest one is Macavity, where, like, I mean, it's the it's the second best song. It's got a 10 on my list here. <laughs> and there's only one how other does, 10. Doesn't that one go like Jellicle Cats? In my mind, that no. one just goes, Macavity Cat. Macavity cat. It's Macavity <laughs> no. cat. Macavity cat. No, it's cat. the like sexy detective number where all the like Macavity's a missing. Oh, that is one of the best ones. Yeah. It's good. Macavity's a mystery cat. He's called the hidden paw. For he's a master criminal who can defy the law. He's the bafflement of Scotland Yard, the flying squad's despair. For when the scene of crime McCafferty's not there and like it's just the two <laughs> women alone on stage and they're like it's super weirdly sexy even though he's just kidnapped their like boss they're all like oh McCafferty and then Napoleon of crime and but they talk about this cat about how he's like you know sort of um cheats at cards and he steals your turkey and stuff but what we actually <laughs> see is like a demon that turns up, laughs maniacally, kidnaps someone, 
and then is never seen again. So like the correlation between what we're hearing about what this cat is like and what we actually see the cat be like. Yeah. So that's the other thing as well in cats. They're always talking about someone. The person very rarely comes on and is like, hello, this is me. It's usually someone going, oh, look, it's this cat. This cat is like this, which is kind of bizarre. I'm pretty sure the cat who fucks comes out and talks about how much he fucks though. So. Oh yeah, he gets, he's, yeah, he's the cat who fucks. That's it. That's his story. He got a he got an eight. To be fair, I think it's just I I it's been a long time since I read the poems, but mm. I remember them being like the borrowers, like Fantastic Mr. Fox, like it's this kind of animal community, but it's grounded in the real world, insofar okay. as that it's not being magic. I do I I don't remember there being anything about going off to cat heaven and all the cats come together to no, that have was, a cat the committee. The musical. Yeah, so it's all that that really But there is a jellical ball in the in yeah, the poems, but as I, far as I remember. From what I remember that feels more like, oh it's like an alleyway and the cats are gonna eat out of a bin and we're gonna call it the jellical <laughs> ball. Whereas this musical is like, oh no, the the cats are coming from far and wide and you know, I yeah. in the poems it's like what it's like when my old cat, cat used to sit in the garden and then uh, this white cat would come in and they'd go <laughs> at each other for about half an hour. <laughs> and then one day I went downstairs and he'd exploded the cat. It was just my cat who was a black <gasps> cat and he, he had, there was just like a patch of white fur on the garden and the cat's lead on the like in the middle of the patch of fur and then I looked at my cat and he just had white fur in the corners of his mouth <laughs> and so I could, only, I could only assume he'd bitten the cat so hard that it exploded oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Like a balloon, and I, I, you know, I did see the other cat later on walking around without its lead on, uh, not its lead, its collar. But um, you know, obviously after it had reformed, <laughs> oh. I needed more. I needed more cat humor, more more stuff about like oh, like like the Puss in Boots movie. Yeah, I needed more stuff like ah, oh, my cat, and then like they stop the song to do a hairball. Then, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean no, that's no, too no. hacky, that... but that's the kind of thing I yeah. want. I know what you're saying, but I think I think there's something really fun. Like I love cats now because I like I like it kind of ironically, as bad as that may sound. Because you watch it and you're just like, this is so fucking strange. But the dancing is so like mesmerizing, and the costumes are so like good. Like they're genuinely great costumes. Um, yeah, and you know. Some what? of the music is fabulous, and then yeah. the rest of the music is shit. But you're willing to sit through it because you can do something else while it's on in the background and you're just like, aw, cat. I do think the costumes are, if you have to make, you have to kind of come up with a look that allows human beings to perform as cats on stage. So not, you know, in a film. Um, it has to be something they can put on every night and wear. It has to be something they can dance in and sing in. Something that their sweat isn't gonna make the paint run away. Like, that. basically, yeah. I, I think all things considered, it's a really good job and a really good yeah. realization of it, and it's a very um, uh, iconic look as well. You know, it's kind of defined yes, how is. people dress up as cats. I think so. Yeah, credit to him on that front. Yeah, Hooray. it is. <laughs> I think the art direction's <laughs> pretty good on the whole, to be honest. As much as yeah, it annoys the me, that, nice. yeah, the staging's nice. So Jenny Any Dot's got a seven point five. She <laughs> had a seven, but um, then the tap came in, and I love me some tap. I didn't like a cat. The idea of a cat tap dancing annoyed me because they've got they've got really paddy paws, and it's like. Maybe if she came out and said, my 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 claws need to be trimmed, and she had massive claws and then tapped with those, I'd be <laughs> alright with it. But I'd have liked it if the actors never walked on their hind legs, and they were just on all fours the whole time, and they could only pick things up with their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Although having said that, my cat used to um, eat with his hands. He used to like just scoop his Dirty. paws into his bowl and pick up handfuls of food and Aww. eat it. See, this thing, I've never had a cat, so I don't... I'm looking at cats as a child, and I'm like, eh, seems accurate. <laughs> what are these magical beings? <laughs> like... you, you know what this is like, right? Everyone at work loves RuPaul's Drag Race, and they come in every week, and they're like, oh, did you watch it last night? And then you hear all these stories about, oh, well, uh, Francine Needles and... and 
yeah, Siskine. Yeah, chocolate Orange McGee. Yeah, and it's like, what are you talking about? But they, they love it, and they follow it, and they understand it. RuPaul is and the I, new cat. I tried watching an episode of RuPaul ages ago, <laughs> and I just, I just now, I didn't have a clue what was going on. It was just baff- It was just incomprehensible, and that's, that's what mm-hmm. Cats is like. It's the same thing. <laughs> Except it's, a it's, it's not as flamboyant. Yeah, and everyone comes out. They do like a performance introducing <laughs> them. Then they vote for the winner who gets to go and be yeah reborn killed. <laughs> That's it. RuPaul is the new cat. So you heard it here first. Yeah. Um. After Rum Tum Tugger, we meet Grizabella the Glamour Cat, and we get her song, which is a a, a very low six point five. How long do you think it's going to take for a RuPaul West End musical? Or Broadway. Oh my god, I'm, Broadway. I'm surprised. I'm surprised there isn't one already. There's probably one in workshop right now. Yeah, that, it's it's inevitable. That's got to happen soon. Yeah, because yeah. they don't want like good original content. They want stuff that's going to make money. Although I suppose there's a long history of um, drag in in Broadway. It'll probably be Rocky in the UK Horror before and, it was in. Yeah. It'll be like a fringe production, like an yeah, off Broadway. Yeah, like Rocky Horror. And uh, what's the yeah. other one? The, is it? What's that one called? Where the two men pretend to be women or oh well, there's God. cabaret which had a song like that the, but is it the birdcage or the something oh i don't know whatever some like it hot the producers riffed on it for their keep it gay song oh uh, right the producers that's a good musical all right it is a good musical. <laughs> what cat do you think you would play if you were casting cats alan i think you'd be buster for jones <laughs> <laughs> how dare you <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd want to be the tugger bugger, but that's the one you want to do, obviously. <laughs> um, that's basically yeah, who you played in uh, Legally Blonde, isn't it? <laughs> well, just a big swaggering cock. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. Um, but no, I don't know. I'd be the storyteller one. I think you'd be Buster for Jones because they'd appreciate your uh, moustache. And they go, oh yeah, he's, he's good at that. He's good at playing like badgers and war generals and stuff. He's got, <laughs> he's got a type. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I was really struggling with this film. Uh, I definitely, I, I made a note that said I'm 12 minutes in and there's no way I would continue watching this if it wasn't for the podcast. <laughs> so I was struggling like early doors. But then, like I said, after that, I kind of... I made this realization that it's like okay, this is this is a dance. It's not it's not musical. The music's crap. We don't have to worry about that. It's about the dancing, and it's good. The dancing is perfectly uh-huh. good. Musical theater dance. But if I'm watching dancing for its own sake, it needs to be better than that. And I want some proper like bit of ballet or something. And that's why I said the Mistopheles thing. That felt like it actually went into that properly. Uh, when the yeah, I I agree. It's like when the um the the cat at the start who comes out and starts doing a bit of ballet where she's like lifting her leg up, and it's you know an impressive ballet move. But I was just watching it thinking, oh, it's wobbling a bit. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. Like the the songs aren't quite good enough to hold up on their own. The dancing isn't quite good enough to hold up on their own. The plot is non-existent. I get it, I do, I really do. There's just something, maybe it's just the relentless amount of times I've seen this thing and the whole thing against cats that I'm like, I just, I don't know, I'm just like, I, it's great, it's fun. Like, it's just dumb and fun and... Here's another thing I don't like about musical theatre, and which is, is... Five pounds for an ice cream! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not five pounds even in London, come on. Three pound ten. Yeah, the 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 Mungo Jerry and uh, Ebenezer is that what's it called? Rumble teaser. Mungo yes. Jerry, I remember Come because on, of the band. When people in musical theatre do a kind of working class accent to show like that they're really like, especially a working class Cockney accent, it's like it's it's the Dick Van Dyke accent basically. Uh, to show that they're kind of down to earth and working class. For the for the ninety eight, Mungo Jerry and Rumpel Teaser were dubbed, so whoever's singing on stage isn't the voice that you actually hear. Mm-hmm. That's why you got to get the likes of a uh, James Corden in to to get the genuine answer. Right, okay, but like <laughs> they've cast him as Buster for fucking Jones, the character who literally holds a silver spoon. It is so on the nose, <laughs> and they've cast someone who's like, all right, come on then, lads, and you're like, oh my god. What the fuck have you 
they're done. Obviously, Do you know what the worst thing is? It, aren't they for the modern day? I I heard Buster for Jones is gonna drive like be driving and just singing along to a song on the radio when when he appears. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they're they're modernizing. With celebrity it. in the yeah Taylor Swift in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, I, I really hate James Corden. Same. <laughs> my my girlfriend made me watch some carpool karaoke, and I'd managed to avoid it Ugh. for like however many years of my life, and it, it was just it was it's it's one of the worst things I've ever seen. Yeah, like it's up there with two girls, <laughs> one cup, and and it, it's just you know I've never I've never watched any of those beheading videos online, but it, I reckon they'd be <laughs> about the same. <laughs> I really don't like him. <laughs> why? Why is that? What's he? What's he done to me? He's not even a bad actor. He's a horrible person. I've heard lots of stories from people that have met him. I was just gonna say, did you see that clip of him and Patrick Stewart falling out on at the Fashion Awards <laughs> years ago? <laughs> and Patrick no, Patrick Stewart, who'd obviously had a bit to drink, came up. He was pre- James Corden was presenting them, and then Patrick Stewart came up to present an award or accept an award. He just sort of went, "You." You, I have to say, you young man, if you want, you're standing there with your hands in your pockets and your belly out, and it's, it's, and, and then James Corden's going, oh, oh, I c- you could not be further from the truth, sir. Oh, and it was like, oh god, just fuck off, James Corden. Don't stand at the back of the stage with your hands in your pockets, looking around as though you wished you were anywhere but here. Oh, you couldn't be more wrong, sir. You couldn't be more wrong. Oh, genuinely. And if it looked like that, I'm so sorry. But when you come up and present an award, just f***ing get on with it. There we go. <laughs> I mean, Patrick Stewart didn't come out of it well either, I'll be honest, and everyone loves him. Yeah. So, but See, he taints people. Yeah, exa- exactly. <laughs> I think he's very talented. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of people would put <laughs> Gavin and Stacey up there with <laughs> The Office, wouldn't they? I, I wouldn't. Have you ever watched Horn and Corden? <laughs> yes. I mean that was, I, that's how he got away with it because he he found the one less talented man in the world than him <laughs> Matthew Horn and just stood next to him and that's that got him a career in America but you know you you've you've got who who has a choice between James Corden and you know even like Jimmy Fallon or someone and picks James Corden or all those, those shows are on at the same time, right? Or is oh no, he's the late late show, isn't he? He's the one who comes yeah, on. Yeah, he's after. the late late. I mean he 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 got in a spat with uh Bill Maher recently, after Bill Maher did a, a monologue ma- like criticizing fat people, and then James Corden was like, "Oh, you're oh, yeah. you're a bully making fun of fat people," and again to to come out looking like more of a dick than Bill Maher is quite impressive. Like it, he's <laughs> anyway, lesbian vampire killers, one of the worst films I've ever seen. Just let I drop that in. All right, I didn't even bother <laughs> seeing it. My uh, my one line review was uh, this film feels like it was directed by Edgar Wrong. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that took me a while to get that. <laughs> Um, I gave Buster for Jones the song a seven, and then we get Mungo Jerry and Rumpel Teaser, where they do that thing where they hold onto each other's ankles and cartwheel across the stage, and it's got a ten out of ten from me. That was a pretty cool move, given that. Uh, are these all meant to be cat names? Because in my experience, yes! cats, cats are usually just called like Bill <laughs> and Fred. You're right, Fred. You're right, Fred the cat. Oh, it's Mal. Where's Malcolm? It's Malcolm the cat. Garfield. Yeah, <laughs> there, there should be a song. Oh my god, they should do that. They should do. Here comes Garfield. Yeah. He hates Mondays and he likes to eat lasagna <laughs> and he hates John. And <laughs> a total of fifty-four cat names are given in Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats, most of which Elliot derived from British culture, including references to Anglian, Anglican traditions, historic and literary figures, as well as geographical locations. And, and amazingly, Andrew Lloyd Webber didn't cut a single one from the <laughs> stage play. No, he added. Oh my god! Did version he? Has additional what? cats that are Is not that... seen. <laughs> Is that like how they add? Um, they write an original song when they make these things into movies. Yeah. So they have a shot at an Oscar. He added an, an original cat <laughs> a, to have a shot a at the, cats. the cat. <laughs> yeah. A cat, a cat that doesn't sing or gets barely any screen time. One of them's called Exotica. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Yeah. Was that that just a stripper? Just as poetic who, who as all the other names. Climbed up on stage in amongst the out of work action. <laughs> <laughs> Old Deuteronomy gets a five, by the way. Griselda, Griselda was a young waif who relied on her looks, and once those looks were gone, goodbye. You are no use. Grizabella, and actually, that's not her backstory. I just Wikipedia'd her backstory, and it's completely different. Because <laughs> <laughs> they do all have backstories; they just don't ever get mentioned. It's like Lord of the Rings, isn't it? You plot it out yeah, this whole you've world. Got, you've got there's a Silmarillion just for cats. Old Deuteronomy, of course. Um, will be played by Judy Dench in the new one because gender bending is only a thing if it's Judy Dench. Well, of course, Judy Dench was supposed to be in Cats, wasn't she? That was the famous thing. She, yeah, she was meant to be Grizabella. Who was? Judy Dench. What on the, the what the stage show? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, in the original West End. Room. But then she couldn't do it. Got replaced by Elaine Page. So it makes sense for her to come back, but bring her back as Grizabella. Very big of her to not be like, what? You want me now? to do your shitty little cat thing now you're making a film you want me now i'm a big star you can piss off <laughs> they didn't they didn't throw her out because they thought she wasn't famous enough <laughs> she uh she did her achilles tendon in and she couldn't handle oh, the okay. uh, movement she could have been the three-legged cat there, there's a there's a very disappointing lack oh, of a three-legged yeah. cat in the show i have to say yeah. <laughs> I that's agree my with that. that's my favorite kind of cat or one with like a sort of wheelchair <laughs> yeah legs. yeah <laughs> they're great so the awful battle of the peaks and the pollicles comes next. It's got a 7.5 from me, and the rumpus cat used to really frighten me. The rumpus cat, <laughs> rumpus. you may not remember, was the cat that comes out with, like, like he looks like uh, Evan Peters Quicksilver, but with, like, red goggles and black hair, and he basically screams a lot until the dogs shut up, and that's how that story ends. Yeah, was that that that's that song that, that little thing they did was about like um, a race war between dog breeds, right? It was like yeah. Ah, one of the few lyrics I picked up was them referring to Pekingese dogs as heathen Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually I was saying to someone the other day how much I would love a, a remake of Cats and Dogs that was just better, but it was just like about an all-out war between cats and dogs. I I, I think there's legs there. If, like it'd be better if they didn't make it into a crap family film. Just made it into like a really gritty. Yeah, I hated cats and dogs. That was my opener on Tinder for a while, where I, I just say <laughs> if every cat in the world, if every dog in the world, g- just got together in a big field to have it out all, all like once and for all, and all the cats could bring like tigers and lions along with them, but the dogs got wolves. Who do you think would win? And I mean, the answer's obvious. It's dogs. They outnumber cats. Like each cat would have to kill about fifty dogs. It just it would never happen. But <laughs> but um, you know, you, you engage a lot about people by their reaction. Because some because some time I think cat cats would win because they're crafty, and it's like no, they wouldn't. The choreographer <laughs> really loved the choreographer really loved that that the move where they would like go between another cat's legs that was used so many times where they would just like shoot under someone else's legs it's very cat like it evokes cats <laughs> is it i used to love that bit i love me a dance break in the middle of a musical all the best ones have them oklahoma ha- like an extended ballet dream sequence oh, that's that's the yes. that is the American worst bit Paris. of any musical for me get fucked i, I hate yeah exactly it exactly so exactly much. american <laughs> American in Paris, La La Land, all that. I hate it. Oh, fucking singing in the rain. Yeah, bad, one. bad musical. The so Charlie's good. Angels. <laughs> the be- I-, I tell you now, the best part of any musical, and this rule holds true pretty much every single time, is the end of Act One medley where all the songs smush into each other and it, it, every like shits in yeah. the fan. And this doesn't have one because there's no story and they couldn't do it. It has and all, a dance break. And all the songs sound the same anyway, so it wouldn't be that impressive if they put no. them all over the top <laughs> no. of each other. Only like 65% of the songs sound the same. <laughs> um, we then get the first of 3.5 renditions of the song Memory. <laughs> yeah, they really milk that, don't they? They really milk <laughs> They they were like, we've got a hit here, lad. Is that just in this version that they did, like, with 20 years hindsight? Or is, was this in the original uh, thing? This is the short version, everyone. Oh, God. Yeah, this is really? a bridge. This is about two hours. Yeah, this is... They, they, they leave out a huge character who will be in the Cats 2019 movie played by Ray Winston. 
Oh, amazing. <laughs> That's how Alan wanted um, Jason Statham to play Thomas O'Malley in a in Aristocats <gasps> remake. Yeah! <laughs> I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> is this was this just ripping off the Aristocats? Because when you think about it, that like his intro, he comes in and he sings his name, and his name goes on for about ten years. Abraham De Lacey, Giuseppe Casey, Thomas O'Malley, the Alley Cat. That is just a Cats musical number. <laughs> <laughs> it is, to be fair. So is the opening of the Aristocats, to be fair. It's very jellical, yeah. catsy. And then everybody wants to be a cat. That's like something they might sing at the. The jellical ball, except good and catchy. So, <laughs> and I just to if we can talk about memory, um, the song. Yes, uh, I did make a note <clears throat> when it when it was in the film. I was like, oh, is this the only real song in the film? It feels like totally different to the rest of the songs. If and it feels like it's been lifted from Les Mis or something like that. You know, like a proper. It, song. it feels it feels like more of a standalone song. The others kind of ebb and flow into yeah. each other a bit more. I think, yeah. But then I, I did read about it, and yeah, it is. It's the only real song in it, and it? all the others are poems put to music. This is the yeah. song that they wrote for it. Yeah. So it, yeah. it just stands out like such a sore thumb, and obviously it stood well, out in yeah. social history as well, contextual, um, yeah. you know, cultural history. It stands out as the one good song. I would say it's the it's the one song I'll really stand behind. Uh, well, that's what I mean. I think it's the only one that's a real song in terms of musical theatre stuff. from Rhapsody on a Windy Night they just slightly changed the lyrics a bit is that why it's got nothing to do with cats yeah (laughs) 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 then comes another 9.5 out of 10 with Gus the theatre cat the like frail old cat played by John Mills and he comes on all shaking with his like fingerless gloves and he's all like back at my day I played this cat and it appears in the red and that was scary as well he used to scare me as a kid Fire. I'll be honest Se- seems like an open shut slam dunk case that's the cat you let go euthanasia to yeah <laughs> he's old he's getting on Look, he's, he's too old. Let him die. Oh, but the insinuation is that he is dying because he can see this vision of his younger self playing this character. Exactly. And everyone else on stage is like, what are you doing, Gus? And he's like, but it's me as a child on stage. And Let they have him to, go like, to heaven. bring him on. Because now true. he's probably going to die. And not and get reborn. He, and he'll just vanish into nothingness. My problem <laughs> with that cat is he's not different enough from... We've already had a couple of, like, old cats. And they're not quite as old, but... Like, I like Ken it. Page and I think it's it's a really sweet poem and it's because it's not really it's sort of um it, it it really wins from being sort of spoken sung instead of like sung sung. So he's like I sit in the pub and I talk about my days in the theatre of old if you buy me a beer and and it just it's really charming. I really I think this one is a really good little number, um, but it just gets lost amongst all the other stuff. I, I don't particularly like the song, but I, I do think he's a nice, distinct character. Mm. But then, like I say, I, I, I think maybe they could have cut Ken Page and Buster for Jones, because they're a bit similar. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. But fuck Buster for Jones. Then we go to a solid eight with Skimble Shanks, the railway cat, which is adorable and is going to be destroyed in the movie. If you've seen the still. this one, this one more than any of the other songs, just felt totally disconnected to everything Skimble else. It was just like, Shanks, the what is this? Railway cat. But admit that's it's Andrew Lloyd Webber just reusing like bits of set from from Starlight Express again. And... <laughs> yeah. It does. It does sound like uh, "Whistle Down the Wind" or whatever it's called. It's like again. every other Andrew Lloyd Webber song ever written. 
And I yeah. love it. It got an eight from me. Yeah, and it, and it's it didn't evoke the railway. That was the other annoying thing because you get cats in like Japan who literally have a job at the railway as like a ticket conductor and stuff. I think that I think that's what it is. Aww. It's like all the others are like their their songs are about them doing something that is essentially cattish. This guy's like a train conductor. What's that? No. And and He's his song isn't very conductor. evocative of trains. I wanted him to be like, ah, I've been working on the railway. He's like a cat that hangs out at the railway. You see them in Britain all the time. He's just like like a cat that just sits in the railway office or like he even says he like fo- like the conductor's checking your ticket and he's like and I'm always there behind him to remind him like blah blah blah. He does fuck all the whole point like he's introduced to sleep. Like that's what he does. He sleeps. But he's like Oh yeah, I'm the railway cat. By which I mean I like sleep yeah. in the railway master's office, and I just like live cool. by the train tracks. Hey, we're just getting up to the third act climax now because then suddenly there's a power cut and Macavity turns up. What do you get if you eat too much shortbread? <laughs> <laughs> a Macavity. <laughs> I should have got Japanese Bond in to do that, shouldn't I? <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't care for for musical theatre. No, he doesn't. He does like uh, cats being inducted as official employees of railway stations. So he is very <laughs> fond of that. So there's, there's like a cat. There should be a cat who just comes in, and there's two little actors playing mice who do like a little mouse ballet. <laughs> and then he like just walks up to them and like picks one of them up and tears them in half. And there's like stage stage guts you know like streamers but they just like red streamers going everywhere i used to go downstairs and there'd be like a mouse's face on the carpet like not its head its face (laughs) and the cat the cat eating it backwards up to the like the ears and the eyes and the nose and the mouth and it would just be there like screaming looking up at you see i think what you're you're actually hitting on a good point here which is this would be better if they were more cat-like. I, I think, I think basically, if you gave a room full of kids a pen and paper and just said, like, design your own cat, that's that's basically what this musical is. It's yeah. like, this cat, this is the cat who wears dishcloths. This is the cat who only eats bananas. <laughs> this yeah. cat, this cat, like, if you give him a pencil, he'll snap it, and he's like, only ballpoint pens. The thing is, Sol, everything you're everything you're coming up with is better than this this show. Hey! <laughs> I do think they missed the trick not having an incontinent cat, because that is a real kind of cat that you get sometimes. One that's like it can't be rehomed, it's in a shelter and no one will take it. <laughs> they should make a thing like I wanna know which cats come from a smoke free home and which <laughs> ones uh which ones are used to uh which ones are used to children and dogs and which ones need to be kept alone? <laughs> That's All this information should be in the songs, but it isn't. Does that not come across in the dancing? Do you not get that from the characters? <laughs> <laughs> no. You know what this show needed was a giant, a giant pair of problematic legs and like a broom that would just no. come in <laughs> shouting... <laughs> <laughs> shouting Thomas before that? all the cats run away. <laughs> and now that And then then they let they let so, Isabella die. Yeah. At the end. Is that the end? Yeah, Is she goes up to the heaven side layer after they touch her because they realise that like, you know, she maybe doesn't have AIDS. Do any, my cat died of feline AIDS. Uh do any cats um purr in this uh yeah when they're like dicking about by themselves they like and i assume when they go out into the audience they do but no it's not like in the song they're not like we are cats we are cats i'm pretty sure that's one of the songs (laughs) (laughs) do any cats do that kind of noise that cats do sometimes like when you go into a room i don't know or or you know when cats see a bird out the window and they can't get it but they're like talk you know when cats kind of communicate to each other and they do that kind of <laughs> noise have you ever seen that <laughs> it's velociraptors <laughs> well it's because it's because it's because cats meowing's only for us you know that oh yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's them trying to communicate with us yeah they don't meow to each other that's like how they talk to humans but they just do morse code with their throat but that well they pretty much do yeah if you ever hear it they kind of they sit at the window going <laughs> It's 
creepy. I've I just realised Garfield should have come out and sung that Boomtown rap song. <laughs> tell me why I don't like money. Tell me why I don't like money. Tell me why I don't like money. I want to shoot. I think that song's about, like, uh, school shooters, isn't it? It's about Garfield. No, 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 it's really about Garfield. It's a common misconception it's about school shooting, but it's, it is about it's Garfield. It's actually about Garfield. They're true okay. intent. It's about Garfield. That's why there's a verse about lasagna school. in it. There's a verse about how much she loves lasagna. <laughs> Tell me why I love, I love lasagna. lasagna. Tell me yeah. why. But, that, yeah, but that's, only, that's only, like, the extended album version, so I don't think people are familiar with it. They've only heard the radio <laughs> edit. <laughs> Fuck the number, just send us your lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> this is this has been the most scattershot episode we've ever done. Well, much like the musical itself. They are doing a film based on it. Oh no, no shit, we still need to do we need to rate it? 7.5. <laughs> See, I I I kind of I wanted not to watch it. I, I was hating it. I just didn't know what it was but you know at the end of the day it's um some nice prancing about and that and uh, i thought it was in terms of this version we watched i thought it was a nice sort of adaptation of stage to screen do you know what i mean i thought they filmed it really nicely in terms of getting that energy out so on, on that basis anyway i gave it a five i i hate it i gave it four out of ten <laughs> <laughs> quite generous i think Overall. Yeah, and, and and you know, if anyone here should like it, it's me because I love cats and I love musicals. And Cats twenty nineteen isn't going to be like this. Cats twenty nineteen is going to be. I mean, judging from the trailer and what little information there is in it, it does seem to imply that they're going to explain the story a bit more and that actually have a, elements of plot. No, what they've done is they've put a main character in, which they isn't in the musical. So the white mm. cat, Victoria, that does a lot of the ballet, the kitten, mm. who touches Grizabella for the first time. When they when they announced they were making a Cats movie, I kind of assumed it was going to be going down the route of Johnny Depp and Into the Woods, where he plays a, a, a terrifying um, Mr. Wolf figure. It's just kind of him in, like, wolf makeup, and it was just bizarre. Because, um, <laughs> again, they look- tried to translate something that works very well on stage to screen yeah. and it didn't work yeah and they did the a very is, bad job and the then wolf I... is meant to be played by the prince character because like yeah. they're making a point he's also meant to have a penis but you know and, <laughs> and then i heard they were doing a uh james corden ruined a bit of that as well didn't he yeah. um <laughs> i heard they were doing it with uh with motion capture cgi and i thought oh interesting and and i kind of imagined like just photo realistic cats prancing around and singing and I, I quite like that so then when the trailer came out and it just looked like people with makeup on it was like well what was the point in that why but have it, you done it, it like this it didn't even look like people with makeup on it looked like a horror movie like as we've mentioned the, yeah. the makeup in cats is really good and if they'd done that then that could have been cool or if they'd actually make them look like cats that's fine what they've done is they've made them look like weird sonic hybrids with like people with fur and like some of them are wearing yeah. clothes and some of them aren't, and it's really creepy. And it's got it's that kind of Polar really Express feel to creepy. it. The faces. Uh, yeah, so. that uncanny valley. And then the cast yeah. is like a a Family Guy joke. Why is Jason Derulo in this movie? Is he? Isn't? Yeah, he plays the cat who fucks. <laughs> the cat who likes to fuck. Uh, oh, is Jason I mean, Derulo makes... a singer though? Isn't he? Isn't that what I'm familiar with him as? Yep. Look, David Bowie's dead, so... But it'd be like if they had redone Oklahoma in, like, 1999, and they'd said, oh, Britney Spears will be playing the character of Laurie. But they would have done that. <laughs> Based on Les Miserables, I think Tom Hooper's casting decisions are pretty much just throw a dart, uh, like, a load of headshots, and hope yeah, for the best. Because there's no reason or rhyme to... Well, no, there's reason or rhyme to about half of what he does. And then half of it is like, what is... Why? Mm-hmm. Why? Russell Crowe? <laughs> now... Idris Elba's in it. Playing McCavity. You love him, don't you, Alan? 
You love that Idris Elba. You love him. Can he sing? He doesn't, he doesn't need <laughs> well, to. Well, I haven't. I've really gone off Idris Elba. Why? I haven't seen him in anything good. You were since never the on Wire, Idris Elba. You never thing. liked him. I like him. I like him in The Wire. He's fantastic in The Wire. It I gave like him a career, and he's not done anything with it. But people seem to think he's good. See, I for, I didn't know him before he did The Office, and you were you were shitting on him from then on. You were just like, oh, why is he in this? I remember Taylor Swift was heavily rumored to be. Um, playing someone in Les Miserables for a long time. Yeah, so she was it's... probably up for Cassette, wasn't she? I mean, she... She can sing, I guess. She can sing. She can sing. probably act well enough to portray a cat. I mean, this really is this really is a film where you don't need to worry about if they can act or not. It's not like Les Mis where you need to find someone who can do both. This is just like, can they sing? I, I think it would be better if they could act, though. I think... Nah, the computer will do it. <laughs> <sighs> so, is this film going to be shit, then? Yes! They're adding a new song for an Oscar grab, inevitably, with Taylor Swift. Yeah. So so what's her... Is she the, you say she's the new one, Bombler Runa. She's not new. She was the cat that was in red that sings Macavity and, like, most of the songs. Did she not have a song of her own? No, we don't hear about Bombalarina herself, but she just sings about everybody else. I hate how big the cats are in it as well. I mean, the again, sizes surely... This doesn't make sense. So one minute Rebel Wilson's got her hand in a normal-sized mousetrap, then they're picking up a knife that's, like, the size of them, and then they're in a space that they're in a chair that's, like, four times the size of a human. Like, the proportions are all over the fucking place. Ah! It's like a magical world. <laughs> it made me look so bad! Weird decisions being made. But, you know, it's... It, I mean, good on Tom Hooper for not just resting on his laurels, and he's trying new things. With Les Miserables, he made a big thing about live singing and it brought a very um raw grittiness to Les Miserables mm. that um I mean it was an interesting bold decision whether or not it quite worked or was mm. the right decision for that it's musical definitely, I'll, I'll definitely that worked in episode, favor but... of the actors but you know yeah um and you know he's gone he's gone another route with this that's quite bold and a a, a swing and uh Perhaps a miss, we don't know. A very distinct visual style, yeah. Yeah. Do you think this film's going to be in 3D, the Cats film? Because surely the one the one thing you can kind of do with technology is you have the cats come out into the audience, like in the stage show, but with like 3D, they're just coming out and crawling around and you can like reach out and try and grab them and they're not really there. Why though? Why would you do that? <laughs> my My approach would have been just to... I, th- I think maybe CGI is the way to go, but I think, like I say, I would have done it with just photorealistic cats. Did it need to be done? Of all the musicals in the world that are crying out for a movie version of themselves, because sometimes they get made better. I know that the Chicago movie is very different from the stage version, and both are very good in their own right by being very different. The cabaret movie is very uh, good and cult because it went in a different direction. Um, then you have your jukebox musicals like Moulin Rouge. Who was asking for a remake of a live-action version of Cats? Who was asking for that? We've got one. It came out in 1998, and it stars Ken Page and Elaine... <laughs> Ken... Yeah, and the lame page, and like I tell, I I want uh I want Billy Elliot, I want that. Billy Elliot that was filmed when it was on the West End, and it sometimes comes on Sky Arts. But um, I just want I want a proper film of Billy Elliot. It wouldn't work as a film, so has that ever has that ever been done successfully? Where um, oh, of course, it has Little Shop of Horrors. There you go. Where a film's turned into a musical, and then it turns back into a film of the musical. Yeah, yeah Little Shop of Horrors. There you go. Do it with Billy Elliot. That'd be good. Uh, let's have obviously Book of Mormon, but I think Trey Parker wants to make that once the uh, the money's dried up on the stage show. And yeah, that's not of course. For another twenty years yet. Yeah. Um, what else is there? The I guess Hamilton. People like that. I haven't seen it. That'll be a mus- That'll be a movie soon. Um, Wicked is being made into a movie. Ugh. Um, Avenue Q can't really. It defeats the point. Oh, you can. Uh, haven't you seen Meet the Feebles? Peter Jackson's pre Lord of the Rings, uh, <laughs> no. the film, the film that basically got him blacklisted by the New Zealand Film Commission <laughs> or whatever they're called. <laughs> I want, I want Mean Girls. Make that, make the Mean Girls musical back into a film. Legally Blonde. I want that as oh, well. Oh, Legally Blonde musical's brilliant. A version of Legally Blonde I can enjoy. Hey, what? <laughs> what about Kez the musical? <laughs> oh, that. I mean. Are you joking? But I think that would probably it's work probably really done, well. Hasn't it? 
It's probably it probably done. has, yeah. <laughs> what, a, what about Die Hard the musical? That's, That's got definitely to have been, done. been done. That that there be you know what I think uh, Bob's Burgers did it thinking about it. I'm Agent Johnson and I'm Agent Johnson and we're from the FBI. I'm Johnny Johnson. He John. I'm Johnson. Two bad foot federal guys. I might just be a local cop. Will you guys back off me? Things are getting pretty tense. Does anybody want coffee? <laughs> the Wicker Man. That could be done well. Ooh. There's a musical element to the film that they could build on. Yeah, but you could you could build a big I... Wicker Man on stage, <laughs> and then you'd have Christopher Lee being all like, "Welcome to Summer Isle." I mean, he released a Charlemagne album, concept album, where he played Charlemagne, <laughs> so he'd be well for it if he was still alive. He's still alive. He's just gone back to his home planet. It's not. It's not. A, oh, Men in Black done. Hey, there you go, Men in Black the musical. Perfect, and it can have. The original Men in Black theme tune sung by Will Smith in it. And the one from Men in Black 2 as yeah. well. They can work there you go. It's a hip hop musical. Boom. With, with, yeah, get get some of the actors out of Hamilton uh, Boom. involved. In fact, get, no, yeah, that's who you get, get jo- uh, Lin Manuel Miranda to write it. Yeah. Brilliant. Genius. Done. Right, sorted. sorted. We fixed Broadway. <laughs> we fixed the movie musical. 